The third way that we're going to solve a system of linear equations with two variables is using the addition or elimination method. You hear it both ways. So what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to force an x or a y to clear out so we can solve for the other variable. Then we get to play substitution and sub in what we have found. Now my preference is that in order to do addition elimination, I really like it to be in x, y, equal, and a number format. So I've put these in that format for you, and we're going to actually add. But before we start adding the columns, I'm trying to see if an x or a y variable will clear itself out. And if you look at this, if I'm adding a positive y and a negative y clear themselves out, if it doesn't happen, I will force it to happen in other problems that we'll be doing. But the first thing I look for is, is an X or Y going to clear itself out by itself? And if it does, that makes it even easier for us. Okay, so these clear out. Now, let's add the columns from what is left. A 3 and a 6X make a 9X. And a 9X is equal to 5 plus 4 is 9. If 9x equal 9, when you divide by 9, x will be equal to 1. Now, last time when we got one variable, all we did was sub in that value in either of the problems. So if x is 1, I'm going to find out what y is. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let me go ahead and erase this. I think I'll just pick the top one, and when I get to x, I'm going to put 3 times 1. So 3 times 1 plus y is equal to 5. Well, that means that 3 plus y is equal to 5. Solving a basic equation says move the 3 to the other side by adding the opposite. So it appears that y in this case is going to be 5 take away 3, which is a positive 2. So these two equations have one ordered pair in common, one point that they will come together, that they'll intersect, and that's going to be 1 comma 2. So the answer to this is 1 comma 2, since you're not graphing it. All right, now let's take a look at this one. Do you see an X or Y that's already prepared to be cleared out? You should. Look at those X's. I have a positive 1X and a negative 1X. They clear themselves out. So let's clear it out. Always look for that first. That clears out. <clears throat> now let's add our y's. I have a negative 2y and a positive 5. Negative 2, add to it a positive 5, is a 3y. And 8, add to it a negative 17. I think that's going to be 9, but what kind of 9? I think it's going to be a negative 9, don't you think? Now let's divide by the number of y's we have, which is 3. And 3 into 3 is 1y. And 3 into negative 9 is a negative 3. So in this case, we have solved for y, and y so far is a negative 3. So I'm going to go negative 3, and we'll come back and we'll fill in what that x is. All right? <clears throat> now, if y is a negative 3, I can pick whichever one I want to do. So I think I'll pick the top one. I'm, when I get to y, I'm going to put a negative 3. x minus 2, here it comes, times a negative 3, is equal to 8. Negative 2 times a negative 3 is a positive 6, equal to 8. Let's have the 6 move to the other side by adding the opposite. x is now equal to a positive 8 and a negative 6 is a positive 2. So the answer to this one is 2 comma negative 3. Pretty good? All right. So the first ones I showed you, they already had prepared for us an x or a y to disappear, to cross out. And we just solved for the other variable, then we subbed in. Now we're going to go just a little bit, little bit further on this one. Okay? <clears throat> Okay, let's try this. 
I'm going to go 3x plus y equal negative 17, and I'm going to say a negative 6x minus 2y equal negative 17. <clears throat> now, I'm looking at the x's, and they don't clear out, and neither do the y's. So we're going to have to make this happen. If you choose to get rid of the x's, since 3 and 6 have a 6 in common, if this is a negative 6, what could I do to make this be a positive 6? I could multiply it by 2, couldn't I? And if I do it to this one, I'm doing it to the whole left side and the right side. So let me do this. Let me multiply the top by 2 because I'm trying to get rid of those x's. Though I could have chosen y, it doesn't matter. And then whatever I do here, I must do over here. Okay, now I'm going to rewrite this right below and pray that my x's are going to clear out. 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times 1y is a positive 2y. And it looks like a negative 17 times 2 is a negative 34. Hmm. I didn't mean for this to happen, but it's okay. I was trying to get rid of the x's, but look what happened. The x is clear. The y is clear. And I'm just left with some old big old negative answer here. Let's see. That looks like a negative 51. You have no x, you have no y, and you just got that number sitting out there. Now, what do you think that answer is? That answer is no solution. You can't solve for x or y because you don't have an x or y. You're left with just a number sitting out there by itself. So the answer to this is no solution. There is no number that can fit into this equation to make it work. None whatsoever. Okay, let's try another one similar to that. It may clear out or we may have a real answer. I don't know. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's try this one. I have 2x plus 2y is equal to 10. And I have 4x minus y is equal to 10. Now, we can cho you can choose x or y. It doesn't matter. Because I like positive numbers, I'm going to go with the x. But watch. If we want these x's to clear out, because 4 is common to both of them, kind of like a common denominator, I'm going to have to turn this into what? This is a positive 4, so I've got to do something to make this turn into a negative 4. All right? What do you think we can do on both sides to make that happen? I think if we multiply by negative 2, that's going to take care of it. Okay, here we go. Negative 2 on this side, negative 2 on that side. I'm going to start distributing. A negative 4x and a negative times a positive is a negative 4y. And 10 times a negative 2 is a negative 20. Now, I think it did what I wanted it to do. Because when I get ready to add my columns, my x's do clear out, and that's great. Now let's add the y's. We've got a bunch of negative here. We have a negative 1 and a negative 4 for a negative 5y. And we have a 10 offset by a negative 20. The difference is 10, but it's a negative 10. It's now time to divide by the number of y's that we have. And we have a negative 5. So if we divide both sides by a negative 5, y will be equal to 2. If I know that y is equal to 2, then I can simply go in and sub in y is 2 and see if we can get x. All right, so let me put y is going to be equal to 2, and we're looking for x. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go back, I think, to this top equation before we did anything to it. And I'm going to sub in a 2 for y and see if I can solve for x. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go 2x plus 2 times 2 is equal to 10. 2x plus 4 is equal to 10. You want to move the 4? I do. Take away 4, take away 4. 2x is now equal to a positive 6. The difference between 10 and a negative 4 is a positive 6. And when we divide by 2, 
x will be equal to 3. So we now have 3 comma 2 is where these equations will intersect. Now that wasn't too bad. Remember we can always choose the other variable. Sometimes one is preferential to another, but in this case they looked about the same. All right, let me try another one. Okay, I'm going to say 2x minus 4y is equal to a negative 5, and then I'm going to say 8x minus 16y is equal to 5. All right. Now, we could do, we could do the y's. I don't want to, but we could do them. But here's the deal. If we did the y's, this is a negative 16, so this has got to be a positive 16. And that means I'm going to have to multiply a negative 4 by a, another negative 4 to make it a positive 16. And we can do that. But I still like the, the looks of that 2x and the 8x. And if I want both of these to be 8x, one positive and one negative, I'm still going to have to, to multiply by a negative 4, aren't I? So let me not divide, multiply by a negative 4 because I want that to be a negative 8 so my x's will clear. What you do on one side, you must do on the other. So a negative 4 times 2x is a negative 8x. A negative times a negative is a positive 16y. And then it looks like over here we've got a negative times a negative, which is a positive 20. Now, I wasn't planning on this, but hey, it's okay with me. I was trying to get rid of the x's, but look what happened. The x's clear out. The y's clear out. And once again, you're just leaving me with 25. No x, no y, no variable to solve for. The answer is no no solution. No solution on that one. Okay? All right, let's try another one, please. Okay, this time I'm going to give you a negative 1x. I don't have to put that one, but I will. Negative 1x plus 5y is equal to a negative 1. Then I'm going to say 3x minus 15y is equal to... Oh, uh, three. Okay, now let's just let's see what we want to get rid of here. If we choose to get rid of the x's, we're going to have to make have to have a positive three and a negative three. So if I were to multiply this by a three, that would be a negative three. If I choose to do the y's, which I can do, well, I'd have to multiply that by a three because that'd make that a positive fifteen and a negative fifteen. So it looks like a positive 3 is going to work one way or another. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by a, a positive 3 and a positive 3. All right? Now, since I'm going to be rewriting that, let me move that. 3 times a negative 1x is a negative 3x. You see that's going to be clearing. A 3 times a 5 is a positive 15y. That's going to clear out. And it looks to me like we have a negative 1 times 3 is a negative 3. The x is cleared out, the y is cleared out, and a 3 and a negative 3, they clear out. Guess what all the, what the answer is going to be? The answer is going to be all real numbers. Or you could also say many solutions, but truly, any real number will fit into this equation and work every single time. So we're talking lots of answers here, okay? Okay, and one more. Okay, let's go 2x plus y is equal to 6, and 4x plus 2y is equal to 12. Okay, now, if I choose to do the x, this is a 4. I need this to be a negative 4, so they'll, they'll uh, clear out. So that means I have to do a negative 2 here. If I choose to do the y, I need that to be a negative 2. So I think if I multiply by negative 2, something, something will leave. So let's do a negative 2 on both sides. 
All right, here we go. Negative times a positive is a negative 4x. A negative times a positive 1y is a negative 2y. And 6 times a negative 2 is a negative 12. Do you see what's getting ready to happen here? Our 4x and our negative 4x clear out. Our 2y and our negative 2y clear out. And our 12 and our negative 12 clear out. Now, just because everything clears out does not mean the answer is zero. When everything is cleared out, any number, that real number that you choose, all real numbers, many solutions, all real numbers, okay? In the next video, we'll do um, in two equations where we're going to have to change both of the equations because the numbers have another number in common. And then I'm going to show you how to do some where fractions have been incorporated into the...